Hey guys, welcome to my second time last video. I really liked making the last video, despite its flaws, and people were telling me how much they enjoyed it, and some people gave me advice on how to improve, which I appreciate. And I also appreciate all the support people gave me. So, thanks to everyone who watched and stuck around. I love you all, and so does God. So, as you can probably tell by now, I'm making some trees. But not just any trees, they're paper birches. And I think they look so neat with the bark peels. And of course, I added a cat later on to give it interest, but you probably won't see it right now. For this piece, I'm using a matte board, regular masking tape for the sides, and a regular pencil for the sketches. For the actual painting, I used acrylic paint, Prismacolor pencils, and of course, brushes, but I don't know what kind of brushes they are. So as mentioned earlier, I am making paper birches. I got the inspiration to make them when I was at a Culver's with my cousin and her boyfriend. And no, this video is not sponsored by Culver's, but they do make good burgers. Anyway, I was eating my burger and I looked out the window to see two paper birches growing just outside. I asked my cousin and her boyfriend what kind of trees they were and they said that they were probably paper birch trees. They were kind enough to look it up for me. I was just so fascinated with how the bark peeled and curled. On the other hand, it seems so strange for a tree to willingly just give up its beautiful and protective bark, especially since it's one of the few trees to do this naturally. Nonetheless, I decided to research it for this video and this painting. Trees are by and large one of the most important things in an environment and the paper birch is no exception. They're used for food and for shelter for many animals, and it was even used for writing messages and used to make watercraft by early trappers and Native Americans. However, this tree does not have very much nutritional value and it has a much shorter lifespan than most trees. On average, they live only between 80 and 120 years. It's not the shortest lifespan ever for a tree. That title would go to the pear tree, which lives 10 to 15 years. The tree is still a very important part of the environment, despite its lack of nutritional value and how small and skinny it is compared to other trees. It's like it's trying to do its best with what it's got. It's just doing what it was created to do, true. But I think we can learn from this tree. I mean, are we doing what we were made to do? Are we letting our fear of not being good enough stop us from trying? It's just something to think about. After doing some more research, I found out that the reason birch trees peel is that they can exfoliate, meaning that birch trees do photosynthesis through their bark. The main reason it's able to peel freely without causing harm to it is because they grow when there's plenty of water. It's hard to be able to get freely if you don't have a source to fall back on when you're in need. It's even harder to grow if you don't have a source at all. Although, you need to be careful what your source is because it could do you more harm than good. It might even keep you from ever growing. I guess one of the biggest lessons you can learn from the birch tree is no matter what, you play an important role. You may not look or feel special, but you are. I believe that every single person watching this and not watching this has a purpose. Don't be afraid to seek it out and to do it. Get knowledge, get encouragement, don't let your fears stop you. It's better to try than to stay where you are. Even if you can't physically move, you can still do so much. Trees can't really move on their own, but they can still do a lot. Paper birch trees have a much shorter lifespan than most trees, but they still do what they can to fulfill their purpose. Don't be afraid to do yours. Now I will discuss my methods. At the beginning, I had a vague vision of what I wanted to create, but as I started painting, I didn't really know what I was doing, and I didn't really like where it was going. So I decided to go over it again with lavender paint. Then I went to bed and took a break from it. Sometimes when things aren't going the way we want, we just need to take a break from it and get a new perspective. I eventually settled on a somewhat limited color palette of purples, blues, and reds. I like this result much better. Sometimes less can be more. When it comes to art, anyway. I wanted to give it somewhat of a winter feel and make it look like it's in the evening. And I added a kitty cat after my mom said it needs more interest. It's always a good idea to ask other people what they think of your pick because sometimes you can become used to the way things are and think it's okay when it's not. Anyway, I really like how this came out. I'm not quite used to making trees or using a limited color palette, but it was fun and refreshing to try something new. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm still trying to find my style and voice, if you couldn't tell. And I would appreciate some constructive criticism on how to improve. Thank you for watching, and I'll hopefully see you again soon. God bless you all, and have a good day.